there's talk now about how Marie Newman could shape the future of the Democratic Party. So first, introduce who Marie Newman is, and yeah, then tell us amazing. about this wonderful guy that she's running up against. She's amazing. <laughs> I actually worked on her campaign back in 2016. Um, she is extremely progressive. I'll tell you just a little bit about her. I'll tell you about the douchebag she's running against. Dan and then, And then I'm going to talk to you about... Um, how the, well, I'll surprise you because okay. it's a little twisty twist in the story. There's a twist? That is maddening. Oh, I, right? I, I think I have an idea. Yeah. I, I think I have an idea where, 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 where you're going to leave well, us Well, if, if, if but any I'll of our regular viewers or, or people that just pay close attention to political news, mm -hmm. you know, if, if they can start shouting out guesses of what the wrench in Marie Newman's race against incumbent mm -hmm. Dan Lipinski is, we'll give you our, like, just points. You'll okay. get points if you get it right. You don't get anything no, for the points. Re recycled at midnight points. <laughs> recycled no. at midnight points? If you see the show, that won't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll pretend to be surprised, but I think I have an idea. Okay, okay, so um, let me tell you about Marie Newman. Okay. She's incredible. <clears throat> she grew up in uh, Illinois 3, which is the district she's actually running in. Right. Um, in the middle of middle class is what she says. Her father was an actuary and her mother stayed at home. Uh, she's the youngest of four, which is why she says she has such a loud voice and doesn't need a microphone to project herself. Um, she put herself through University of Wisconsin um, and with a combination of student loans and jobs in the food service and, re uh, and retail. Mm -hmm. She went into marketing and advertising after graduation and became an executive. Um, and she's also been involved in advocacy work um, that was deeply personal in regards to bullying. Um, her son, Quinn, um, was being bullied when he was young, and um, she realized that nobody was going to be doing anything about it. So um, she, she said that the onus was on her to solve it. So she um, she actually founded a, um, a, a nonprofit to uh, stop bullying called the Team Up to Stop Bullying. And she also co-wrote a guide called When Your Child is Being Bullied, Real Solutions for Parents, Educators, and Other Professionals. And then a few years later, she became her state spoke, a spokesperson for Moms Demand Action, an advocacy group that lobbies for gun law reform. And she has been an outspoken advocate for trans rights as well, largely largely sparked by her, her daughter, Evie, who was born Tyler. Mm -hmm. um, and when she was a preteen, she became deeply uh, depressed and when they were worried about the Newmans were worried about self-harm they got her into therapy and that was what was able to help her daughter come out as transgendered so um, Murray says that uh, she uh, she said it was the happiest day of her life when she when she got the news because it meant her daughter could be her authentic self and it's just like oh it makes my heart well she's just such an incredible person and an incredible woman um, she is vocally committed to abortion rights Rights. Um, she's also wary about having it define her campaign. Um, she's uh, lightly touches on so-called social issues uh, during her meet and greets, and she tries to focus more on economy, healthcare, immigration, and the district's environmental concerns, such as lead water lines in neighborhoods like Crest Hill. Um, she's very focused on income inequality. It's her top priority. And she talks about uh, the patchwork of jobs that constituents cobble together to get by. She supports raising the federal minimum wage to $15 an hour, universal child health care, and expanding access to public transportation to help bridge the economic and racial divide. So she is, I mean, she's my kind of candidate. And she is running against Dan Lipinski, who, is, I mean, it's it's incredible that he's a, a Democrat and that he's able to to go around with a D by his name. Well, really, Kira, what, what's, what's so curious about him? I mean, he's a Democrat. I mean, we should assume, we should all assume that he's, you know, a progressive. He fights for liberal yeah. policies. If you've been paying attention to the show, you might know who Dan Lipinski yeah, is. Yeah, Dan Kira. Lipinski is, you know, um, <clears throat> he's, he's a piece of work. He um, took over the seat uh, from his father, Bill Lipinski, who spent more than 20 years in office, serving for 10 years in Illinois' 5th District and 12 uh, years in the 3rd. Dan Lipinski is known as one of the most conservative member members of his party. He voted against the Affordable Care, Care Act, opposed recognition of same-sex marriage, the and initially voted against the DREAM Act, which would have created a pathway to citizenship for undocumented people brought to the U.S. as minors. He's also vehemently against abortion. Uh, Lipinski co-chaired the Congressional Pro-Life Caucus and was the only Democratic member of Congress who spoke at the 2019 March for Life. 
Um, you know, Illinois uh, three covers uh, areas to the west and southwest of Chicago, encompassing urban, suburban, and um, and exurban communities. It is a solidly blue with pockets of conservatism. Um, so that is. That is who she's running up against. Now, the other little detail, like I said before, she had she had run against Dan Lipinski before, and she right. came within 2.4 percentage points, <clears throat> or just over 2,000 votes, of beating Lipinski with a campaign that she says was put together with gum and sticks. So she, um, so she is really confident in this next cycle. She always figured she would be running again, right? Um, even you know, inside of going into her first her first run, um, and this time she has an existing supporter and donor network and better name recognition name recognition than she started out. But there's a wrench. So yeah, I, real quick, I do want to mention just a couple of things because uh, when Harlan's media was still on the radio, uh, we didn't cover the 2018 you know debate. We didn't do a live stream on it because you know we were, there was a lot of stuff we had to work on. So we so the team. Team and I, we all sat down, ate pizza, and watched it. We saw TYT do a coverage on it. And when it got to the race between Dan Lipinski and Marie Newman, Jank was really talking about how Marie Newman looks like she's in the lead or can de- defeat the candidate. But then all of a sudden, her votes went away. And then Jank almost took a step back, like, wait a minute, what's going mm-hmm. on here? And Jimmy Dore, who was co-hosting with him, said, oh, yeah, that's Chicago politics. That happens in Chicago. Yeah, that just and, happens and, in Chicago. Yeah, heard about that. yeah and, and, we, and in the interview, we did actually talk to Marie Newman about that. Um, but I will say this. I'm really glad to see her in the race now. She, I'm so thankful she, she's in. She, 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 I, as, as I remember, she currently has support from the brand new Congress and Justice Democrats. She does. I wouldn't be surprised if any other progressive groups surround her. I mean, she is somebody who, you know, is really fighting for progressive issues. But now, tell us about the wrench. The wrench. What okay. is the wrench? So if any of our, <clears throat> if any of our viewers want to hurry, hurry, hurry. And, and do a guess of what the wrench in the campaign is. Three, two, one. Okay, so it has a new daunting obstacle. The DCCC, the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, has new new standards that really? stop vendors of political services from working with primary candidates who challenge incumbents. Wait, the DCCC is doing this? Yeah, it essentially oh. created a blacklist. If, vember, if vendors help a primary challenge, <clears throat> the DCCC will not hire them or recommend them to any of its campaigns. Mm-hmm. Three vendors have already dropped Newman's campaign and a handful of others dropped out during the vetting process. So the DCCC rejects the description of its policy as a blacklist, but Newman says the vendors have received threatening phone calls for even considering working with her. Mm. The organization has even gone after primary challengers directly. So that is the real impact of these kinds of decisions. You know, Just- it's... Okay, so, ah! so so just so just a couple of things. Um, number one, Illinois. I mean, I'm gonna give a shout out to Governor JV Pritzker. I'm really impressed with how he's been st- uh, fighting for a lot of progressive issues. But he signed in in, in his uh, especially in short term as being governor, uh, protection for women's rights as well as protection of uh, Planned Parenthood here in the state of Illinois. And the thing is, D Triple C. Not only does the D Triple C have to call it, call us into question, but also the DNC establishment. Um, you guys have gone on the record saying that you are against what Alabama and Georgia has done in their respective states, you know, basically denying women the the right to do what Mm -hmm. they can with their bodies. And the thing is, you guys are supporting a Democrat, Dan Lipinski, who mostly votes with Republicans. Yeah, you're supporting a right-winger in the Democratic Party. Yeah, so uh, what's the big strategy? How how are you going to win... A more democratic support. You're, you're, you're idiots right now mm-hmm. for supporting Dan Lipinski. Absolutely. This man is not going to vote in favor of protecting women's rights. He's anti-LGBTQ. He votes Republican. It's these types of Democrats, Democrats like Dan Lipinski, mm-hmm. that that causes a politician like Trump. Yeah. People are disenchanted with the Democratic Party because of this stuff. Yeah. It's disgusting. All this does is it keeps members of of, of of the Senate and Congress in place, and it keeps it male and it keeps it white. And do you want to know a little, little fun fact? We talked to uh, Marie Newman about this, so check out that interview. Maybe tomorrow, because we're going to be covering the presidential debate. So check that interview out. It's an outstanding interview. I was really happy to have the opportunity to mm-hmm. talk to uh, Marie Newman about her race for the 3rd Illinois Congressional District. And she's somebody who should be in the United States Congress. You know, we talk about people who want to bring in change. 
Uh, Marie Newman represents that. But there's going to be, you know, it, it, the only way we're going to do this, the only way we're going to bring in much needed political change is we also have to reform not only our political system, but we have to call out the DNC establishment and the DCCC mm-hmm. because if they keep doing this, progressives aren't going to have a chance. So we have to step up our game too. And if you want to volunteer or donate to Marie Newman's campaign, I just put in a donation today. Mm-hmm. It is marienewmanforcongress.com.